rely on Jesus. There are so many people that are still living who Jesus may have healed. There are so many people that are still living at the time of this gospel who say, wait a minute, that's not what happened. That's not how it looked. If we go back and you ask me some things about Edwards Presley, that was before my time. But I think if we ask some other individuals, they might know. But I probably can ask everybody in this room something about Michael Jackson. And whether you like Michael Jackson or you did not like Michael Jackson, you can probably reference that story in some kind of way. Because it hasn't been that many years. And so that's the part that I want you to see is significant about this book of Mark. It hasn't been that many years since Jesus was crucified. We're talking about less than 25 years. So this is a significant thing. And so the language of this book, it has so many different eyewitnesses who can say that's not true, that's not right, that's not true. And the other thing you'll see about this particular book is that it begins with a bang. It begins with a, woo, let's roll, let's roll. It does not have a nativity scene. It does not talk about how Jesus was born. It doesn't deal that way. It deals with his ministry, and it deals with his ministry with that first baptism. When we talk about John the Baptist in chapter 1, and how God was sent with John in your life, who was a forerunner, who was a preparer, so forth and so on. But the, the two books that have an activity scene would be the book of Matthew and the book of Luke. But Mark doesn't start with that. Mark starts right into the ministry of Jesus. So it's just an interesting thing about Mark. you got to understand that about Mark. And Mark has miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle. And there's a place over there in Mark's gospel that we study. Over there in Mark chapter 5, there's a miracle after a miracle after a miracle. And chapter 5 is on the backside of a miracle that ended in chapter 4. I mean, it's just an amazing, action-packed book. There's only 16 chapters here, so if there's anyone that you know who's looking to grow their walk with Christ, someone who is maybe lost some of their fire, some of their esteem, or some of their faith, tell them to study the book of Mark on their own time. You don't have to worry about being lost in the story. You don't have to worry about being lost in the genealogy. You don't have to worry about being lost in the history. Mark lays it out. He makes it rain, and he tells you, pop, 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 this is what happened. The other thing, as we recap what we did in this particular chapter, over there in chapter 8, something significant happens. Chapter 1 through 7, if you will, Jesus is saying, I want you to know who I am through personal experience. But what I want you to understand about faith and about God, it's all about a relationship. Faith is flows from a right relationship with God through his son, Jesus Christ. This is all about relationship. I don't ask you to come and be a part of CFA Church because this is the new religion or this is the right religion for you. We ask you to come and be a part of CFA Church because we believe what God has us doing will grow and strengthen your relationship with him. And so it's about relationship. So chapter 1 through 7 of Mark, lots of things going on that is designed to build that relationship. And that's the key point. In chapter 8 of Mark, what chapter? Eight. Chapter 8 of Mark, there's a huge turning point that happens in, in the middle of this book. Anybody know what that turning point is? Anybody in the Bible study know what happens in Mark chapter 8? That's a significant place in this journey. What happens? Okay. Well, what happens is, if you go to Mark chapter 4, and I'll go there now. When you get home, go to Mark chapter 4. Somewhere around verse 37, 38, 39, but definitely after verse uh, 35 of Mark chapter 4. What it says is, they say, what matter of man is this? Who is this to? So here they are on the boat. Winds are blowing, the waves are blowing, the boat is about to capsize, it's filling up with water, kind of like our lives. When trouble comes to such a point, it feels like we're overwhelmed, whether it's financially, whether it's relationships, wherever it may be. And so here it is, they're in this boat, they feel like they're going to die, Jesus is asleep on the pillow, they're going to have their hair out, they are stressing and having panic attacks and everything else. And then Jesus is asleep. So they go wake Jesus up, and then what happens? Jesus says, peace be still. It's just not a big deal. And the winds calm down, the seas stop rocking, and that's an extreme calm. Not 30 minutes later, but when he begins to speak. 
to give thy name all the praise and all the glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Let the saints say amen. 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 Uh, it's truly a blessing. It's always a blessing to be a part of something. You just want to know your part that you played in that song. It's always important to know your part. And as the pastor was talking about eight chapters, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen, okay, he laid sixteen on me. About five minutes before Bible study. You doing sixteen. But it's always a blessing to be ready. Young man, you always want to be ready. You don't never have to get ready. And if you look at our lives, the Holy Spirit is trying to get us ready. So what is the significance in chapter 16? And for a minute, we could talk about it. We could talk about the church. And I thank God for the pastor. He just gave it to the church. Because what happened was in the 16th chapter, uh, because of love, there's a woman called Mary Magdalene, another Mary, and another young lady named Salome. They went down to put spices on the body. Y'all with me? Y'all don't go to sleep with me. I know y'all want to hear y'all pass If you just open your ears and open your eyes, you will learn how to start seeing Jesus in everything. And that's what's wrong with these people here. They followed it, and some didn't even see it. They were right there with it, and some didn't even know who he was. Don't be that one. He been doing all these miracles, doing all these things for us, bringing us thus far, Brother Jason, and we still don't know who he is. What a shame. So we're going to talk about the church in chapter 16. Because they came to put spices on the body. Y'all read? Have y'all read? Y'all read 1 through 15. Have anybody read 16? Nobody been studying anybody. But in 16, they came to put spices on the body, and they're going to find out that the body is gone, Miss Carol. And so, who took the body? And we're going to find out that he left, went back, and he gonna come back, and then he give them their marching orders. Y'all with me? Okay, he give them their marching orders. Go and build the church. And as I was sitting there, and see, it's how you believe. And that's what happened to people, how they believe. Even though Jesus was with them, he had been loving them, he had been caring for them, he had been doing for them, and yet, Or do you see it half full? Or do you see, ah, we got to buy all these other buildings and we're going to have everybody mad at us and we got to get all that over there because the Holy Spirit is going to press all the people up in the church. That's what I saw when we first acquired it. When we came in here, man, this ain't good enough. What are y'all going to do? But he's going to do it in his fulfillment of time. Y'all with me? But it's going to take you, Miss Carol, you young lady, bro. And, and, and that's how the church going to start. Because if you read it, he's going to tell them, go and take. And that's what we miss now. We think it's somebody else's duty. We think it's for somebody else, not me. Come on, I'm coming. I'm here, Pastor. Don't call me. Don't expect nothing. I gave my money. Nah, I ain't got to tell nobody. And, and, and we'll see too. You will be you live in life telling people about the gospel, or you live in life going around gossiping. It's either one or the other. You tell the folk how good God can you, how good you need to come and hear my pastor. Because God is good. You need to 
what chapter he did it in. I, I wasn't here on chapter one, game, chapter two, three, four. I got in on 16. But he told them, if you lift me up, I'm going to draw all men unto me. That's powerful, yeah. They gave us the opportunity to say that. They gave us an opportunity to sit at the world. He loves us. 
do it. Uh, Brother David was not planning to speak today. And uh, it was just, I didn't know he was coming over to uh, 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 church today. But he came over and I was really headed to pick up something from a vendor and he kept saying he was coming by. And I, I told him I wasn't going to be at the church. He said, well, I'm coming. And so for some reason, I turned around to the Holy Spirit 